In this video, I'm going to explain step by step what I would do if I had to start all over as a brand new option trader. Welcome to my Life of Learning Stock and Option Trading channel. I'm Randy Perez. I have over 20 years of experience as a stock and option trader. Here are the things I would do step by step if I had to start all over as a brand new option trader. The first thing I'll do is to save up more money. When I first started out, I only had a few thousand dollars to work with. And having more money at your disposal will enable you to spread your trades around and help you to have less of your overall money at risk in each position. One way to look at it is that I like to view each dollar I have as a soldier. That soldier's job is to go out and get more soldiers or more dollars for me. The larger your army is, the more dollars of soldiers you'll have at your disposal and the better off you'll be. For example, it's better to start off your army with 10,000 soldiers or dollars than say 1,000. The second thing I would do is to find an expert that could help me learn how to trade. Look, as a new option trader, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. If something is working for someone else, it'll probably work for you also. So the fastest way to become a successful option trader is to follow someone else that's already successful as an option trader. The easiest way to be successful in any field is to find an expert and learn from them so that you too can eventually become an expert. So if you want to be an option trader, it's best to follow someone that's already successful at trading options. That'll help you pick up the skills that that person already has. However, you don't want to pick just anybody who says they're an expert. You want that person to be a real expert. You want them to have a lot of experience and not be brand new to option trading. I would look for someone that has a lot of experience in good and bad market environments. I would really want that person to be really battle tested and have a proven track record behind their trading. I would absolutely want that person to know what they are doing. That's one reason why on this channel and in my Patreon group, I show you all my real life trades and talk in depth about the trades that not only go our way, but also the ones that go against us. And in my monthly option trading cash flow video series, I show you my actual brokerage statements. And those statements are also posted on my Patreon for everyone to see, patrons and non-patrons. The third thing I would do is to continually remind myself that I'm brand new to option trading and that I'm in the first of four stages of what it takes to become an expert option trader. As a new option trader, that first stage is called the learning stage. The second stage is the testing stage. The third is the profitable stage. And the fourth is actually when you become a master option trader. In that first learning and second testing stage, this is where you're learning your new strategy. Then you're going to take that new strategy and test it out. You want to learn all the ins and outs, and become very familiar with your strategy. Now, contrary to that, what a lot of people do is when they find a new strategy like option trading, they get very excited and think they're going to take that strategy and immediately become a master option trader. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. You need to spend time to learn the market. And probably even more importantly, you need to spend time to learn how you respond to different market environments. Stock and option trading is just like anything else. It takes time to learn. For example, if you want to learn how to play baseball, you know it's going to take some time to learn how to hit a ball or to throw a pitch. It'd be unreasonable to think that you could pick up a bat, ball, and glove and be an expert player in a week or two. And the same thing is true of trading. It'd be unreasonable for a new trader to believe they could become an expert in a week or even in a month. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Keep reminding yourself to calm down. Remember that you're in the learning phase of this new business. Don't try to force things and just focus on learning the right way to trade. The fourth thing I'll do is to spend a lot of time paper or demo trading. Now contrary to that name, paper trading, it's actually trading in a demo account. You're not trading with real money. If you're like me, when I first learned about stock and more specifically option trading, I got super excited. I was super excited to make some money in this brand new business because I saw great potential in it. On top of that, I didn't like my current job. I didn't like my current financial situation. So I wanted to quit my job as fast as possible and didn't even really paper trade or demo trade at all. I jumped right in with my real money. And although I made some really good trades and made some good money, every so often, I'd make mistakes that cost a bunch of money. And as a result, I'd give my profit back and sometimes even more than the profit I'd made over the previous months or sometimes even the profit I made all year. So if I had to start all back over as a brand new option trader, I spend a lot more time in a demo or paper trading account to help me learn and build the skills I would need to be a long-term successful trader. I would spend time getting to know the markets and how they moved around become familiar with how to handle an account that matched the same size account I would have once I started trading with my own real money. For example, if you're going to start with a $20,000 account, you don't want to be paper trading or demo trading with a million dollar account. You want to be practicing with a $20,000 account. 
That way when you start trading live with your real money, you're trading the same position size as you were in that demo account. So I would make sure to trade my demo account the same as I plan to trade my live account. And I would spend more time trading in that paper or demo account than I did when I started out. The fifth thing I would do is something that I did a pretty good job with, but I could have done better, and that's to review all of my losing trades every single week. Actually, to this day, I have my first trading journal sitting within four foot of me, and I pull it down every now and then just to remind myself of the importance of reviewing trades that go against me. It's very important to study your losers. If you can turn those losses into small losses, or even a break even, or maybe even help them become profitable trades, you've gone a long way towards becoming an expert trader. There are a lot of traders that don't do that. And probably the reason is, is that they don't think it's very fun. You're reminding yourself of where you made a mistake and then you get to relive that mistake. But that's really one way that you can actually coach yourself. By reviewing the trades that went against you, you learn not only techniques that can help you become a better trader, but you're also helping to tweak your trading psychology, which in many instances is more important than your actual technique. When you pinpoint why a trade went against you, you now have something to remind yourself of every trade so that hopefully you avoid making that same mistake again. So analyze your losers. I promise it will absolutely make you a better trader. You won't regret the time that you spend reviewing those losing trades. The sixth thing I would do is to study my winners. Now I'll be honest with you here. I did a decent job at studying my losers, but I did not do a good job at all of studying my winners. My thinking was that I made a good trading decision, why bother studying what I did right? But what I now realize is that by studying your winners, you're actually teaching yourself to see that perfect moment when it pops up on your chart. You know, no, that's the time to enter a trade. When you look at winner after winner after winner, you'll begin to see patterns. You'll see why certain trades almost always turn into winners. Then when you see that same setup in a chart, your instinct will immediately tell you that this is a winning trade. So by analyzing your previous winners, you'll recognize when that special moment shows up in your charts. And that will help you to become a really good trader because you'll recognize in real time that you're looking at a good trade. A lot of traders forget why they are winning. Or they might be on a winning streak, and the next thing they know, they've made several bad trades and they're on a losing streak. And they're losing for weeks or sometimes even months because they forgot what a winning trade looks like. So study your losers, Know why you lost in those trades, but also study your winners so that you know what a winning setup looks like when you see it. The seventh thing I would do is to focus on the process of being a good trader. In the beginning, all I could think about was the potential profit and the money I was going to put in my pocket. I really didn't care so much about the process. I was rushing, sometimes even being so excited that I was literally shaking. I was so concerned with the money and potential profit that I forgot all about going through the steps going through the process that I should have been going through that would enable me to be a successful long-term trader. I was so excited that I convinced myself that the market was going to do what I wanted it to do. I didn't have the patience to sit back and look for what the market was trying to tell me. I was just forcing my trades because of my emotions and wasn't following my process. And I'll tell you, that was a really big mistake for me. Because I didn't have a good process, when I had a trade that went against me, if it was a big one, it would devastate me. And I would almost quit trading sometimes even for months at a time just because of the emotional devastation. Whereas now, if I have a trade or two that go against me, whereas I will analyze them to see what I did wrong, I know that I always go through the process on every trade, the process I have in place that has helped me become an expert trader. You see, when you have a process, if a trade goes against you, it's not that big of a deal. You have a process that you can trust and that you know that sometimes trades, they're just gonna go against you. But by going through your process on every trade, in that long term, you will end up being successful. So don't think about the money. Don't think about winning. Think about going through the process because if you do that, the money, it will automatically show up. So the difference is trade your process, don't trade your money. Stop thinking about the money and focus on and think about your process. The eighth thing I would do is to really study and get to know not only the overall market, but get to know how the individual stocks that you're going to trade in act. I would focus on doing that independent from the opinions of other unproven traders. For example, one thing that most people learn is that the trend is your friend, right? And that's true until the trend reverses, then it's not your friend. So it's important to see what the trend looks like, but it's also important to know when the trend has the possibility of reversing. So you want to get to know the market inside and out. Not only are you looking for the trend of your overall market, but you're looking for the trend of the individual stocks that you're trading in. You're also looking at the range that they are trading in. You want to see if the overall market and stock is trading at the upper part or lower part of a trading channel. 
You want to be able to see changes in direction coming before they actually happen. That'll help you determine what's most likely going to happen in the future with the stock and the overall market. Just like people, stocks, they have personalities. So you want to get to know the personality of your favorite stocks you plan to trade and also the personality of the overall market. Doing that in real time will enable you to become a more successful stock and option trader. The ninth thing I would learn is how to analyze and research the companies I was going to trade in. Many of the companies I traded in as a new option trader, I did strictly because of volatility. I really didn't know whether the company was fundamentally sound or, or about to go broke. I just saw that it had good option premium or if I was buying a stock outright, the stock appeared to be going up so I want to benefit from it continue to go up. But now I realize how important it is to analyze, to read up on, and to research the companies I'm going to trade in. And that's especially true with the companies that I buy in my outright stock ownership account that I plan to hold those stocks forever if at all possible. If you'd like to join my community of stock and options traders and get an alert as soon as we buy stocks and sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see how much we make monthly as option traders, Check out the videos at the link above in the description below entitled Option Trading Monthly Cash Flows. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.